Joseph Schmidt, uh, good afternoon. Congratulations for the title. Uh, yesterday, in the end of the celebrations in Marques de Pombal, you said, and I mean, you reinforced the idea that Benfica achieved the title by playing an offensive football. So, uh, adding to that, actually, uh, there was a lot of youth in the main team from Benfica. So, could you be more proud of um, what Benfica with you has achieved uh, during this season? Yeah, of course. Uh I'm, I'm the coach, so of course I'm, I'm very proud because at the beginning of the season um, we talked about our goals and one big goal, if you are a coach of Benfica or a part of Benfica, it doesn't matter if you are the coach or player or staff member, um, you have to go for prizes, so that's what everybody expects. And um, then after a long season, if this is finally done, then of course um, we are very uh, proud, very relieved, like I said also yesterday, because uh, it was hard until the last second to become a champion. Um, so right now um, we are we are happy, but uh, of course we also um, um, noticed that we we had to bring a lot of effort in. So I think we had a very hard competition with the other clubs. So we needed also in the last match a win. So it was um, demanding for for everybody, not only physical wise, also mental wise. So we we, we had to show also um, the mental power, especially because four or five weeks ago when we lost against Porto and against uh, Chavez, um, the, the momentum changed a, li a little bit and we had to change the momentum again for, for, for us. Um, in the end, uh, I think we showed that we also could um, play under this uh, pressure, good uh, football, that we believe in ourselves. And at the end, um, yeah, I think we, we deserved to become champions. Mr. Schmidt, uh, good afternoon. Congratulations for the title. Thank Pedro you. Ramalho from uh, TVI Portugal, CNN. Um, yesterday, you conquered your first title, your first career title as a coach. Um, what, is, what, what are your feelings right now? Have you woken up already from the party at Marques? You, you said yesterday that you heard a lot about the party in Marques, but leaving it is a, a different way. And also, I would like to know um, what is the feeling of celebrating here football in Portugal and in the other countries where you've trained? Thanks. To be honest, I had never saw something like yesterday uh, before. Uh, so I think it's maybe unique or one of the best <laughs> celebrations you can have in uh, European football. Uh, probably I saw some pictures before, so because in our dressing room and everywhere are pictures from Marquez Pombal when other teams of Benfica won, won the title. So, but the picture is different than uh, if you see it in, in real. So it was amazing, everything, uh, the match, the, the atmosphere in the stadium, um, then also the drive to, to Marquez Pombal and then at Marquez Pombal. Um, um, was a fantastic uh, atmosphere, so many people. So uh, that's what we always talked about. It, um, yeah, we have a little bit also as a team the responsibility to to make a lot of people happy. Um, so we felt the whole season the positive um, energy of the people, and I think we we uh, tried always to give something back. And um, in my opinion, it was uh, for for me it was uh, an amazing day yesterday. Also. Because I know um, also the, the players, how, how much effort they have put in and um, also behind all the players, also behind me, there's always, there are always families and people and friends and everything and so we are very happy that we could do it for, for Benfica, for ourselves but also for our families. Hi Mr. Schmidt, Tiago Santos in direct for TSF Radio. I would like to, to know your opinion about um, the leadership of Otamendi in the locker room this season. What was his importance and if you have, uh, if you already know if he stays for the next season or not? Yeah, I think uh, Nico was a great captain for, for our team. So he has so much experience. I think his, his season was also amazing. He became World Cup winner and uh, Portuguese uh, champion. But in, in general, not only Nico, also uh, João Mario, um, uh, Rafa and uh, Grimaldo, the four, uh, four players who have a little bit the role of the, of the leaders uh, in, our, in our group. I think all of them are different, but all of them, in my opinion, they took a lot of uh, responsibility in, in their way. So, um, of course, the captain is always in the first, uh, in the first row. Um, 
and um, all of them were important because we have, you know, we have a, I think we have a good mix in the team with experienced players, um, but also a lot of young players and um, to, to guide them and to lead them uh, through a season, especially with the goals of Benfica is not easy and I think they give them a lot of um, good, good um, feeling and support so that they can could focus on, on their performance and their development. And um, yeah, I hope Nico stays, so I, but I'm not sure. So I think um, we started already, um, I think maybe before Christmas, to, to try to talk about um, a new contract. Um, but his, um, his statement was always to, to wait until the end of the season and then to make a decision afterwards. And so this, the season is now <laughs> finished. And um, so we, we try everything to keep him as our captain for next season. But you know, he's uh, 30, I don't know, 34, 35 uh, years old. Um, he's out of contract so that he thinks about his situation is also clear. So he will get all the time for that. But at the end, if you ask me, uh, of course, we all hope that he stays at Benfica. Hi. Congratulations once again. Thank you. Thank you. From Sport TV. Um, for you, it was a kind of uh, uh, Vini Vidi Vici in Portuguese, Chigar uh, Iveri Vincer. How can you describe uh, this season, uh, your growth uh, with the team uh, and uh, in the club? Uh, how can you des describe that? It's difficult uh, to describe because it was a long season. Eh? And um, so what I learned a little bit um, in the last, uh, last years is not to look too much forward. So always try to, to be in the here and now and uh, especially as a coach to focus on each single day. Eh? So, to be honest, when, I, when we started last summer, at the end of June, so I was not thinking so much about uh, everything, about the upcoming weeks, upcoming months. We had a situation um, at Benfica <coughs> um, that they wanted to change something, so that's why they, um, they needed a new coach. Um, they wanted to change a little bit also the style of playing. Um, we had a huge squad, so we, we started with you know that we, we at, the, at the end we were in the training camp with 39 players, so a lot of players, they already knew that they probably will not stay at Benfica, but uh, it needed some time to, to, make, uh, to make decisions. And um, if in these situations, if you are thinking too much uh, um, ahead, I think it makes no, no sense. So because each single day is a, is a big, big challenge. But what I, what I um, uh, noticed from the from the start that this 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 club and this uh, this group of players has a very good attitude to to train hard to to work hard to develop and i always felt um, that they like to play football that they enjoy it every day on the pitch and then we tried to bring them in a in a good physical condition but also to um, to use every training to to get used to the to the style of playing how we want to play football and in my opinion I was surprised, to be honest, I was very surprised that very quick we were able to, uh, to play like I like to play. So it's also, I was also open to, to adjust a little bit the style of playing, um, depending on the, the quality of the players. And I think together we found a good way. Um, and if you saw um, the, the already the friendly games last, uh, last summer, I think it, it worked from the beginning, so I think we scored goals, we could defend in a good way, even we, we were high on the pitch in pressing everything, so, but nevertheless it was a good balance and I think that was for us very important that the confidence at the beginning was there, the, uh, the, the confidence in the belief in the, the style of playing, the self-confidence of the players. Um, was there and then uh, step by step I think with all the matches we played and then of course with the wins with the playoff um, qualification for um, for Champions League uh, so we already achieved our first goal a very important goal for for the club and then during the, the weeks until the end of the transfer window we adjust the squad a few players left at the really at the end a few players uh, came and then I think we we, f we found a good way to, um, yeah, to, to focus on, on our goals. And um, so when I have to describe um, the, the season, like you said, and for me it was a day by day, always try, try the best. Hi, Hi. Schmidt, Maria Nagos, live for CMTV. 
Sérgio Conceição said yesterday that Porto was the best team in the league. Can you prove him wrong? No, it's okay. I mean, it's, it's his opinion and uh, I, I accept. Um, in my opinion, um, I, haven't, I haven't seen all the matches of Porto, to be honest. Um, but I saw us playing and I think we played very well. And like I said um, before uh, on the press conference, before the match, in my opinion, the team who has at the end, after 34 match days, the most points, and if this team also scored the most goals and conceded the, the at least goals, I think then um, they deserve to become champion. And um, in this role is, is Benfica. Mr. Botard, hit the Journal Record. Um, during the season, you always said that you uh, renew uh, only when you won titles. Uh, and I would like to know what made you um, change your mind and accept before the season ended. Did you already feel like a champion? <laughs> yeah, of course, we are champions um, uh, now. Um, yeah, I said that when you ask me about um, maybe to, to extend uh, the contract and uh, my answer was first I have to show that I'm, I'm good enough for, for Benfica because from a coach of Benfica you have to expect that um, the coach is also able to take the responsibility that you can, can win prizes and that was a little bit my um, my attitude, uh, um, but then of course the conviction of the of the club of Rui Costa of Lorenzo um, to to already extend the contract. Then of course when, when they give me this uh, this confidence, then I, I, I started um, thinking about it. And uh, for me, um, to to is a big honor to be part of Benfica and to extend the contract already after. Um, uh, to third of the of the first season um, is also a honor to get this uh, this offer, and that's why I did it with 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 conviction. Um, but of course, I hoped that we also become champion because without a champion um, title, uh, yeah, it would be maybe a little bit different. Hi, Jean Faring about TV. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, yesterday, your son told that your family has a special connection with Benfica. Uh, like they never had with any other team. Do you feel the same way? I think we had very good connection also to all the other clubs where I have been being coached. So even when I was an amateur coach, so um, I think we are, we are we are football family because we my my children they grow up with uh, with football. Um, first I was a was a player. I played very long. Then I was uh, a coach afterwards amateur coach, later professional coach, so football it was always a part of our, uh, of our life, and also for our children, and of course they are very enthusiastic also uh, about football, and um, also with all the other clubs we have been uh, before, but of course Benfica is a very special club, and if, if you, if you um, see the, the people here in Lisbon, if you see the, the stadium, the support, the, the <coughs> The atmosphere, everything, and then of course, um, it is is very special. And um, maybe what he means is that um, that we feel very welcome here in in Lisbon, um, in general, in the city, but of course also at Benfica. Hi, Mr. Schmidt, uh, Nun Luz. Uh, I would like to put two questions in the next round. I, I don't put the question because it's a personal question. Mm -hmm. um, what what do you do you share with us? Uh, what do you like more, uh, the, your experience in Portugal throughout the, the, the season, and what do you, what do you like about the, the country, the, the food, the, mm -hmm. the experience? No, no football. Uh, and the uh, next question is, uh, uh, if, you, if you stay here a long time, uh, you can try and learn Portuguese now. <laughs> Um, yeah, first of all, to be honest, I like almost everything here. I like the weather, so it's for me it's completely different because um, I lived um, all my life in, in Germany, in the Netherlands, in Austria, so it's completely different, but this is the first year um, I have been uh, in, a, in a South European country, so with, the, with all, all the positive things, especially um, the weather, the food. Um, so I really uh, appreciate to be to be here, and um, I like it a lot. So, and I like also the the, uh, the water, the river. I like the Atlantic coast. I like Portugal. Portugal has uh, 
um, so many different um, um, things, and um, I think it's a great country in general. Any special dish? Or? Fish, so I, I love the seafood, to be honest. Seafood and fish. I changed a little bit my, my, my menus, so it's more in this direction now. Portuguese, yeah. I, I, to be honest, when, when you asked me at the beginning of the season, I said, yeah, I will try. Um, now I'm, I, will, I hope I will stay uh, uh, three more years, so that's the plan. And to try it again uh, uh, this summer, maybe in the summer break I can try, I can have uh, first, uh, I can I have a start. Um, would be great to, to learn it, but um, I'm not sure if I'm able to learn it good enough to talk with you in this round about uh, football in Portuguese or to coach my players in Portuguese will be very difficult, but for sure I will try a, li a little bit. But you know already how to sing, so you are moving fit. Yes, I already saw that. Yeah. There <laughs> 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 was no microphone there, eh? so. Yeah, there was. Yeah, there was. <laughs> Hello, uh, I'm Fernando Urbano from Apollo. Uh, it's some t in, in some point uh, in January, uh, in, uh, you lost uh, Enzo Fernandez. Um, I would like to ask you, what did you have to change? Uh, what did you have to change? Just a player for another player, in this case, Chiquinho and afterwards, uh, João Neves. Or what did you have to change in the team uh, as well? Tactically and strategic, strategically, mm -hmm. because he's a very special, special player. Yes. And did he send you a message yesterday? Um, it was a very difficult moment for us, to be honest. In January, at the end of January, we played, I think, in Aruca, Aruca. And when the match started, it was the last day of the transfer window. I, I was not sure if, if after the match, Enzo is, is still our player or he will move to another club. So it was. Um, difficult also uh, for us to prepare us for this situation to to get a replacement so of course we knew a little bit earlier already maybe one or two weeks that maybe the, the at the end of January we have the same topic again but um, in this short time to to find a replacement was impossible um, so then he left um, and like you said so uh, Enzo was a very important player for us and he was also a player who took a lot of responsibility for our game, especially in the build-up. So it is not uh, not um, coincidence that they paid a lot of money for him. He is a great player, um, in, in my opinion, even when they are not playing at the moment uh, so well. But he will show for sure in the future his outs outstanding quality. Um, and the situation was like it was. So we 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 had to replace him um, with our um, squad. And there were different options. Um, Chiquinho was an option. We tried in the League Cup on this position. We still had um, uh, Frederic Aunes um, and Florentino. So we had good options. But of course, it, they are different, uh, different uh, players. But <coughs> in my opinion, um, a lot of games we played then with uh, Florentino and Chiquinho. And that Chiquinho was able to adjust also his style of playing very quick and to um, to give us also the, 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 the opportunity to, to keep our style of playing from behind. So to, because in our style of playing is very important that um, in the build-up, uh, the centre-backs, they get the support of the uh, central midfielders. So, so very flexible between the centre-backs, between centre-backs and full-backs. And um, I think um, Chiquinho did it fantastic. And uh, he was able to show his quality with the ball from this position. He learned very quick also the technical um, tactical um, topics. Um, it was yeah, for us really crucial that uh, he was there in this moment to, um, to continue and to, to stay successful. And he did it also in the, um, in the Champions League, not only in the, in the Portuguese League. And so that was, a, that was the first thing, it was top. And, and then, of course, later with Joao Neves, he was in our training already um, at the begin from the beginning of the, of the year. He did it very well, and also when he gets some minutes, he did it well. So it, it seems like he's already um, ready to, to play for the first team. And then um, with, the, with the time uh, in, in, our, in our training, um, yeah, he, was, he was good enough to, to give him also the chance to start from the, from the beginning. And 
mm, that he played now, I don't know how many played matches he played now from the start, maybe five, five, six matches. Um, yeah, it's a big surprise, like I already said, that um, he could play um, on this level and each match you have the feeling he's, he's doing better and better and he's a great, a great talent. Um, and for us, uh, very important that we could uh, replace and so uh, we have with our players, so I think it was crucial to be champ to become a uh, champion. Um, yeah, we had a, a short uh, uh, chat uh, messages, so he congrats us uh, for the for the championship, and and I told him that he is also part of it. Uh, boa tarde, referindo aos nomes disso. I would like to ask you, Benfica made a wonderful season against the, the game uh, with Porto. Uh, do you think there was a psychological barrier in that game? against Porto. Yeah. I think these two weeks, um, when I look back, so uh, the match, I think we played first Porto, then Inter, then Chavez. I don't know, it was, I think, like that. I think maybe it was the, not the, uh, maybe the, the, the wor worst phase of this season for us, the first wor worst two weeks. So I think we played, uh, reliable on a very high level, in my opinion, with m not a lot of up and downs, so we stayed on, on, on top level. In these two weeks, we were not on top level. Individual-wise, not. Uh, some players struggling a little bit with their, with their shape, maybe also with their physical um, condition. And um, I think um, these matches, all these matches, in my opinion, we could also win. It was not like it was very bad, so, but we were not that dominant, not uh, that good in controlling the game and in defending like we have been before. And um, in these matches, so the, the, the opponents, they were very efficient. Um, Porto, uh, Inter, and also Chavez, and we had to accept, but I think what, I, what we did then to change the momentum again was very important for the rest of the season. Oh, uh, Vitor Rodriguez, uh, newspaper do jogo. Um, in six games against the title candidates, Benfica won two. Uh, is uh, this a problem for, for Benfica? For like next season? No, you know, it's uh, part of it. So, 34 matches, you have to, you need the most points. Of course, uh, to win the direct uh, um, duels is always good because you get the points and the other teams uh, don't get the points because. Um, in Portugal, uh, you cannot lose a lot of points when you want to become a champion. So, uh, to win these games is, is important, um, but it's also important to win all the other games. And we lost uh, uh, one game against Porto, we won one game against uh, Braga, the same, and against uh, Sporting, we played two times a draw. So, it shows that uh, the, the, the competition and uh, the, the other teams uh, are also very good, in my opinion, uh, the three competitors. Um, Sporting, uh, Braga and uh, Porto are also top teams. You see it also when you, when you see in international games, no one likes to play against these teams, also not against us, so it's very hard to, uh, to, uh, to fight against them to become uh, a champion and that they also sometimes can win matches against us is, is normal. Hi, I'm Roger, Francisco Cavall from Zarza. Congratulations for the title. Thank you. And I would like to ask you now, obviously you have the summer to think about it and to, and to work in, on a, a lot of aspects on, on your game, but for you as a coach, what do you think you need to improve for the next season and the team as a whole? So now, I'm, to be honest, I will not think about football the next days. Huh? So of course we need to, we need to uh, prepare a little bit the, the new season, so of course we have to build up, uh, we have to build a perfect squad for uh, for next season. So that's that's always part of it. Also of the time when you when you are on, on holiday. Uh, but at the moment I, I relax because it was uh, was demanding also for for me and for our coaching team and the whole staff, not only for the players. Um, and then we can we will analyze everything the whole season, um, very detailed. What I can learn or what I learned um, is that I got a feeling for the Portuguese league, for the, for the opponents, how difficult it is also to, uh, to win um, the games, especially away games. Uh, all all the away games are, are never easy. Also the, the teams who have not the, the budget like the top teams, they, they, in my opinion, they have good players, they are doing very well. The coaches 
they have very good tactical approaches, so it's, it's, it's never easy. I think for me it's good to know now the, the league. Um, and, um, and then we, we start again and then we try always to, to develop and uh, to do things better and also to change a little bit um, our, our style of playing. Hi, I'm Philippa Rivair from uh, Renaissance. Do you feel this could be the start of a hegemonic moment for Benfica in por Portuguese football? And other question. If Otamendi, Otamendi leaves, Tomás Arujo, who did a great job in Gil Vicente, is a good solution? Or Tomás, regardless, Otamendi's decision will always be a solution? I think we won this year the, the title. So that's, that's perfect, but that means not that we win next year the title again. So we, when we, the new season starts, we have zero points, zero. We have the 87 points are, are gone with the new start of the season. And uh, we need, I don't know, 85, 90 points again to become champions. So it's so hard and it's not like uh, because we won now uh, once that we now in the, in the situation that we, that we win easily always uh, prices so each each price um, um, is a big challenge so um, also the the bonus we have no bonus for that for the title so it's not that we get an advantage because we won the title it's nothing it starts completely at zero and um, so I'm very humble and I, I know how hard it is so I don't I, I don't know I don't know we will see which which um, uh, transfers we can make, which transfers other teams are, are able to do, and um, so we will see a new season and a new challenge. So, and the second was? If Foto Mendes leave, Tomás Arujo from Gil Vicente is a solution. Yeah, I think Tomás, he, uh, he joined us the, uh, the whole preseason last uh, summer, so th there we had some, some uh, um, decisions to, to make and one decision was that Tomas probably will not get so much uh, match time at the first team um, and that's why we gave him on loan. I think it was a very good decision. The same as with Thiago Rivea. So I think both players, they played a very good uh, season in, in Estoril and in, uh, in Gil Vicente and they come back, they, they join us and um, of course they get also their chance to, uh, to be part of the first team of Benfica. Hello, Roger. Sergio Lopes for the Portuguese news agency, Lusa. Uh, first of all, congratulations on, on the title. Um, we've been talking about, uh, most of all, about um, the success. Um, I'm sorry to be to disappoint and talk a little bit uh, about the downsizes of the season. And my question is if the elimination from the Champions League was the big upset on this season for, for you and for the team. And uh, you talked already about uh, Enzo and uh, the important role that he had. Do you feel that if Enzo would have stayed in Benfica uh, until the end of the season, the story in the Champions League would have been different? I, I don't know. So um, I think, um, of course, we, we were not able to, to win against um, Inter, but it's not a shame. No? So I think. Um, if you see that we played 14 Champions League matches and we lost only one at home against Inter. So all the other uh, matches, most of them we, we won against top, top teams. So it's not, in my opinion, it's not a disappointment uh, that, we, that we stepped out of Champions League so in the, in the quarterfinals. So I think it was a big achievement of the players. If you see that we play uh, with a lot of players who are first time in this uh, situation uh, in a responsible role um, at Benfica to, to fight also in these kind of competitions. So I think they did it fantastic. In my opinion, how Benfica played this season international um, was amazing. Uh, so that's my opinion about uh, the Champions League. And of course, Enzo is a, is a, is a great player. If we would uh, win these matches against Inter, who knows? So it's, it's <laughs> nobody, no, nobody knows that. Um, uh, but that we lost a very good player, one of our best players, yeah, it's clear. And if you cannot uh, replace them, I think we did it very well, like, like I explained. But of course, we missed one top player in the winter break, and that's n never good for, 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 the, for the goals. Hi, I'm 
Professor Schmitz, but also your life uh, for uh, RTP. Uh, two questions too. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, starting about your son, we talked uh, about him, yes, uh, about the, what he said yesterday. Uh, he says uh, you want to um, give the fourth stars to Benfica uh, before leaving. So I would like you to confirm that. Do you, do you feel that with your contract? Until 26, you can do it. And also, what did you feel? Uh, your your contract was extended uh, before the worst uh, part of the season when you got the three losses that we, we talked about uh, too. Did you feel it was pressure to have extended the contract or did you feel uh, some assurance on that? Yeah, the worst part of the season was 10 days, huh? so three matches. So I think um, it was not like, like it was five months or something like that. That's part of football. I think that had nothing to do with my like, with my extensions of the of the contract. And the second, I think I haven't heard that, <laughs> but I think he wasn't serious. Uh, my my son, I think like I explained um, <coughs> before, in my opinion, to look too much forward in football is not good because then you lose the, the focus for for here and now. And um, I think, of course, now we won the title and we try our best again next season to fight for the title again and not only for the for the league title we try out our best in the league cup and also in the cup and also in the in the, in the champions league and that's our uh, our focus and not to look too much uh, ahead hello david marcos mais futebol if you had to pick one key moment or a turning point of the season which would uh, would be which one would be yeah, what do you mean with turning point so um, Imagine when you had uh, some upset uh, uh, almost in the end of the season and then you won against Sturil or Braga. Mm, yeah, I think we, you know, we had not, like I said, we had not so many moments in the, in the, in the season where the momentum changed. So I think we, we stayed a long time on, on a very good level. Um, and it was only possible because we were always focused on on yeah on each single what each uh, single match and um, of course after in my opinion after the when we lost um, a few points and it was from ten to to four points in the in the league then uh, of course it was very important to to focus again to uh, to show also that we are able to keep the the pressure to return uh, to winning games and um, I think then the, I think we won then four or five matches in a row again Bef I think we won the from second part of the season we won the first nine or um, nine or ten matches and we lost two and then we won again four four matches and I think that was was crucial to go also with um, with this situation in the matches against Braga and against in Sporting because of course we knew that we have the the most difficult um, program uh, at the end of the season from all the top teams. Also, if you compare us with uh, Porto, and I think that was very possible, uh, very important that we that we won in this phase our our matches in a good way. Roger, Diogo Varela for Radio Observador. Um, a few moments ago, you were talking about um, the Portuguese league. How did you approach the Portuguese league and the opponents as well? Um, the, the supporters in general, they say that the, the level in the Portugal league um, doesn't prepare the teams for, for example, the Champions League level. If you agree with that, because you've been in other leagues too around the world, if you agree with that, and uh, what do you think has to change? So uh, Portuguese uh, championship becomes a, a challenge one. No, I have a different opinion about the quality of the Portuguese league. And um, I said it already um, now a few times that if you see um, the Portuguese teams playing in international football, in my opinion, they're doing very well. So um, look, to uh, look to sporting, they, at the end they won against uh, Arsenal and Arsenal was in the in the, in, the perf in, the, in, the, in the best phase of their um, season, they were able to, to beat them in, in Europa League. And uh, I think we did it well, Porto did it well, so all the teams promoted also to, to knock out uh, a stage. Um, so I think um, sometimes, if you know how it is, when you, when you are in a league, then you 
always think a little bit that the, the quality is not on top level, but you have the same discussion in, in, in Germany or in, in uh, Netherlands. Um, they are talking in the same way, but I was in, now in, in different leagues and in my opinion, the Portuguese league uh, regarding the quality of the football is, um, is very positive. And um, especially with the, the special situation, my opinion is that you have four teams who, are play, uh, who have, of course, the highest budget, so they, they also they are, they fight for the, for the titles. Um, but that's something special in, in, in Portugal, that you have so many, um, so many teams on the same level. That's why it is so hard to become uh, a champion. Mr. Getting back to yesterday's uh, celebration, we saw you a lot together uh, celebrating with the president of uh, Benfica. How important was um, his uh, support during all the season? Yeah, uh, yeah Rui Costa, our president, um, is also the reason why I'm here. Because um, when we start talking about um, maybe becoming coach of uh, Benfica, so my feeling was from the first second uh, very positive because he's a, he's a great uh, personality. Uh, of course, he was a famous uh, footballer, but also his, um, his patience for, for this club was from the first second for me very obviously. So, um, and um, at the end, we, we came together and from the first day I was here. So he, he's, you know, he's not only president, he's also, he's always here in Seychelles. He's, He's uh, watching all the <coughs> all the other teams of Benfica, so he's um, he's very good with the players. So he uh, always have an open ear also for the um, uh, for the players, for the staff, for the for the coaching team. And um, so I think he gives us a lot of uh, support, a lot of confidence with his experience. Um, and um, like I already said a, f a few weeks ago, um, that in my opinion he really deserves to become champion this season. And so we did it also for him, we did it for everybody, for all the Benfica, um, but also for, for our president. Mr. Schmidt, we are live on uh, CNN Portugal. Uh, uh, a few moments ago you said that uh, looking to the future is not uh, very positive. But uh, as a coach, uh, certainly you look for the past. You look for the past and you look that you had 10 points uh, in advantage with uh, Oporto. Then uh, happened what it happened. What would have you changed in your team, in your uh, uh, in your strategy, to decide the title before the last turn? I would change nothing. So um, you know, I did everything as good as I could could do. So it's not like I I always look back and then I uh, try to. Uh, find a different approach to, to play the game again, so because it's impossible. So what you have to do uh, before the match as a coach is to, you have to make the, the decisions, you have to prepare the players, you need the right approach, tactical approach, and then you have to play. And then during the match, you have to coach the team, you have to give everything to, um, to win the game, and if the game is over, it's over. So it's not that you can play it again. So you cannot use the experience of a lost game and then start a game again, that's, that's impossible. Because it is impossible, I don't think about that, because it makes no sense. So, the game is lost, okay, let's focus on the next game. And so, I cannot say that I would change um, um, anything. Um, but, you know, of course, um, we were t 10 points ahead. Um, no, at the end, we were two points ahead. So, it's, it's fine. So, it's not like we want to become champion with 20 points ahead. So we want to become champion. Doesn't matter with one point, with goal difference, with 10 points, if possible with 10 points would be good for our nerves and everything. But uh, it was not possible. We have to accept also the quality of the other teams and that's it. So for me, it's not a big thing that we were 10 points ahead and at the end, two points. We have 87 points. I think the record of Benfica is 88. So we were very close to the, almost the best season of Benfica uh, uh, ever, so I think we cannot complain about our points. Hi again, Tiago Santos, Radio TSF. Looking for the future, you already uh, met with Rui Costa talking about um, the, t the squad next year. We already know that Grimaldo is out, you need another left back, and uh, you have some other positions that you think the thing needs to improve next year. Yeah, we are talking the whole season, we are talking about. Uh, squad and uh, of, of improvements. Um, so I think 
when the transfer window closes in August, then you start thinking about the winter transfer window and the same in, for the summer again. So that's, that's part of our job and it's a very important um, topic because the better the players, the more balanced the squad, yeah, the, the higher the probability that you play a good season. So, so we, have to, uh, we have to take care that we try to improve our starting 11 that we try to find the right balance in our, in our squad. We will play again a lot of uh, uh, matches, so every three days at the beginning of the season um, um, with, the, with the Champions League matches, uh, so we have to be ready for that. But uh, right now, of course, we, we are, at the moment, we, are in a, we have a good feeling because we have a lot of players um, who showed good quality, who showed also that they can play this, this rhythm. Um, but like you said, so we have to replace uh, Grimaldo. We lose, we lost in winter. We lost a starting eleven player, a top player with Enzo. We lose with uh, Grimaldo, a top key player uh, uh, now at the end of this this season. And of course, uh, we have to re uh, replace these players. Hi, Roger. Uh, once again, Hector Teixeira from Sport TV. Uh, let me ask you about the two uh, personal questions. Uh, uh, yesterday. Uh, I have the opportunity to talk with uh, your wife, and of course, uh, she is very proud of you. Uh, what um, means to you this uh, family support? And uh, another question, uh, we know you as a coach. Uh, who is Roger Schmidt outside football? Uh, what are your hobbies? Uh, you read, uh, you listen music. What, what kind of mus music do, do you listen? I'm the same. So I, as a coach, I, I also as a as a as a person. So I, I of course, in, uh, as a coach, you have a different uh, responsibility. So uh, you have to make a lot of uh, decisions. <coughs> um, but actually, I'm, I'm as a human being, I'm the same. So as a, uh, um, so my character is the same. I always try to be. Um, very honest, also as a coach, and that's also my uh, my attitude as a um, as a person, and um, to to respect and to to enjoy life. So I what I what I like is to yeah, to to live in a good atmosphere. So when I come here to Benfica to 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 train my team, I want come. I, don't, I would like I, I'd like to come to a team um, where a lot of people. Um, are happy, where has a good vibe, where has a good atmosphere to, to enjoy the, uh, the time because we all have only uh, one life and that's also something I um, want to do in, the, in my, my, my uh, private life, so it's, it's the same. And of course families are always uh, the most important thing in life, so for all of us, not only for me, for you as well. Hi again, Roger Schmidt, Maria Nagus, live recorder in CMTV. How did you manage uh, to keep all the players always, always uh, on your side when you played with the same start, uh, starting eleven almost for the whole season? Mm -hmm. And also, if uh, you think uh, the Benfica fans forgave Grimald? Oh, I think they already did it uh, yesterday. So, and I think that was also fantastic because. You know, it, oh, the, the fans are always disappointed when a player uh, leaves the club. Um, and but you have to see what what he did for the for the for the club. He was seven and a half years here, four times champion. Um, so I think uh, he gave everything for the club. And also after he decided to leave the club, uh, he was still on top level. Also yesterday, uh, he was on top level last week. So against Sporting. So uh, yeah, I think. You cannot say better goodbye than he did um, uh, here at Benfica. So he got all the respect from me, but he all got the respect also yesterday from the Benficaista. So I'm very happy about that. Also, that the fans uh, supported him until the uh, the last second. Um, what was the? Yeah. How did you manage uh, to yeah, get to uh, keep the players, all the players, on your side? It's not easy. So that's uh, that's the worst part of the of the coach because you have. A lot of options, and but you cannot use all the players. And so I think um, some players played not enough this season. So I'm not happy with that. But of course, I have also the responsibility to to be successful. So that's uh, that's uh, the most important uh, part. And at the end, um, to manage that, uh, for me, the only way is to give all the players the same chance. So all the players have the s uh, same chance to to play. 
is the, the, the principle of performance. So the best, best players will play, and if they are doing well, so then some other players, they have to wait, or they have to train that good that they can, um, they can um, push other players out of the, of the starting 11. So for me, it doesn't matter who is playing, so I, I, I only um, try to bring the best starting 11 on the pitch to win the game. So that's the only thing what counts uh, for me. Um, and then it is on the players, and uh, we are in professional football. So, and um, if, if you go to Benfica, to, to a club like Benfica, if you sign a contract there, it's not easy to play. There are a lot of very good players, so it's on the players to, to show up and uh, um, to, to perform on best level. Mr. Eigen, as Tiago said, uh, we know that Benfica needs now a uh, left back. And I'd like to know uh, if you know Milos Kerkes, if you can tell us something about him. No, I will not play. Uh, I will not talk now about um, players who are not there. So, of course, I know we know it's our job to, to know the market. And if you, lo if you um, lose a player, a starting 11 player, you, you need to know all the options uh, on the market to, to replace him. And, of course, this player is, a, is, a, is an option, uh, but I cannot give a comment on, on um, rumors. Hi again, from Farinha Bola TV. Big party yesterday. How many hours did you sleep? And I will, uh, also would like to know if you prefer the German beer or the Portuguese beer. Oh, I like the Portuguese beer, to be honest. I like also the German beer, but I, to be honest, I really prefer wine. Um, and uh, I haven't slept. Uh, I haven't slept so much, but it's okay. I'm okay. <laughs> I don't know. Fernando um, Urbano from Apollo again. Uh, one of the main features of your management is, is this, that one that my colleague said that you well, there's uh, a group of players who all, who plays almost every matches. I would like to ask you if is, is that because uh, it's your uh, it's your way of thinking of, of you, uh, you have to manage a team. Or did you feel at some point of the season some 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 lack lacking players? So, um, you had you, you needed more players to to play some matches, but you didn't find the, or the quality or the, the or the physical uh, aspects, uh, strategic whatever. Um, if you did you feel that some in some points of the, of the season because you had a lot of matches to play, um, you would need something more. Yeah, you know, so each single match is very important for us. Huh? So um, you have to win almost everything. And my, uh, my thoughts are always to find the best starting 11 for the upcoming match. And if the players are in a good shape, doing well, they are physical-wise in a good condition, they are able to recover, they are ready again, very fresh for the next game, and they are the best players to play, then they play. Of course, if players get tired, you have to think about uh, replacements or, or about uh, changes. The advantage when they play um, a lot of games is, of course, with the games they, they, they develop and regarding tactical behavior, they are develop um, regarding physical condition. They are developing regarding um, the, the connection between the players. So of course, then um, um, the team is is uh, very good in, in playing together and to get a feeling for each other. So and um, sometimes you have to make changes. So that's it. But it's not for me. It's not like you always have to change something. So that's not my. Uh, my um, conviction. So I like uh, to have players um, on the pitch if they are doing very well to give them also the chance to do it again. And to be this this season was a season also where we had not a lot of injuries. Huh? So I think sometimes you have to change because some players are out, get red cards or whatever. But this season was um, um, the medical department and the athletic coaches, in my opinion, they did a very good job. So. So the players, they were almost always in a very good condition. Um, unfortunately, at the end of the season with, um, with Gonzalo Guedes, we had <coughs> one, big, uh, one big injury. Um, but that was also part of the, um, the, this season that we could play a lot of times with the same starting eleven because the players were always available. So that's always not, not uh, self-evident. 
I would like to ask you uh, if uh, do you think in, in Portugal there's too much talk about uh, referees' errors, uh, even from the presidents and the clubs uh, criticizing the referee? I, I think, I, to be honest, the, the same I uh, was in, in Netherlands, the same as in Germany. So discussions about the referees are everywhere. That's part of football. And I think it was also in the, in the past, it was the same. And in the future, it will be the same. So I think maybe because of the, um, because of the VAR, you have one more topic to talk about. Uh, so I think, you know, at the beginning, we had a referee and two, uh, two assistants. And then we got the fourth official. Then we get the, the referees um, taking care of the, of the goal line. And then we got the uh, VARs. So there are always more people. And then, of course, there are more discussions because there are more, um, more topics. Um, but I think it is not only in Portugal that, there's, that in football, they talk a lot about also about the referees. Hello, Mr. Uh, Sergio Lafayette. Um, <coughs> if I'm not wrong, you're the first German player to win the, the Portuguese uh, championship. Um, I would like to ask you, how do you feel uh, about that? And if you think uh, that Portugal should be more open to foreign coaches, if the Portuguese football would have something to win with that? Because I think Portugal is um, like a case study because Almost all the coaches in the, the professional leagues are Portuguese. There have been seasons where all the coaches were Portuguese. Would be important for the Portuguese football to, to be more open to, to other ideas. It's difficult to say. So um, I think there are all over the world there are Portuguese coaches. So when I was in China, there were a lot of Portuguese uh, uh, coaches. So I think they, they, they spread also their knowledge, their football philosophy to uh, all over the world. Um, why there are not so many foreigners in uh, foreign coaches in in Portugal? I don't I don't know. Maybe because of the language, or I I don't know. But um, to have different um, ideas about football sometimes is is good. So in in Germany um, they are also talking about that. So maybe the, the the Bundesliga is a little bit more open for for foreigners. Um, but I think. Portuguese uh, um, culture is maybe like that. I don't know why there are not so many foreigners. Hello again, Mr. Schmidt, for Rosario Life uh, for RTB. Um, talking about uh, next season, are you ready to lose Gonçalo Ramos? Do you think he will, he will leave the team and uh, yesterday was his last game? And also, uh, how do you feel about preparing the next season? Uh, when you arrived, uh, no one knew uh, that much of how, what you could do with uh, the, this team and in this, this championship, but now uh, every other team knows you and know how you play. You said uh, in the beginning that you prefer to score a lot. You didn't care if you suffered some goals, but you, you, you prefer to score a lot. Now everybody knows you. Do you think it's a challenge even bigger now? No, I don't think so. I think uh, what all the teams are doing is analyzing the opponents. So I think. Um, so they analyzed us also during this season and they try to find uh, approaches to play against us. It's the same like, like we do with the other teams. So I think um, that has not a big uh, impact. And uh, Gonzalo, yeah, I've, I don't know. So I hope he will stay. I think he's, um, he's young enough to stay one more year at uh, Benfica, but uh, he played a great season. He's a very uh, high-talented uh, central striker. There are so not so many on the market. Um, we will see. So I think um, if it could be possible to keep him, but it's at the end also a little bit his decision. But uh, I would be very happy with, uh, if he would stay one, one more season. What about next season? What do you expect uh, for next season? An even tougher championship with uh, stronger rivals? No, it was tough enough this uh, this season. So I think uh, will be the same. So each <laughs> each uh, single match will be a challenge, um, especially like I said at the beginning. You need so many points. So 102 points uh, are, are possible. So we needed 87 to become champions. So it will be similar next season. That means um, uh, that you that you have to win almost everything. Hi again, Diogo Varela for Radio Observador. Benfica hadn't won any trophy in the past three years. Uh, 
uh, and then you reach and uh, you give back uh, the main trophy, the championship. Did you felt and doing like one season balance? Did you felt that uh, Benfica had lost that identity of reaching uh, trophies, uh, the players, even when playing on the pitch? Did you felt uh, that uh, loss of identity? I, I cannot talk about the, the past, so uh, I was not that deep in, in Benfica uh, the last uh, three, four years. But uh, what I saw from the beginning is a club who is uh, uh, he's proud of his identity, uh, who is proud of, his, of the philosophy also to play um, attacking football, who is proud uh, on his youth academy to always develop players, to become top players for Benfica and then maybe also to make a step um, um, abroad. So from the start, uh, I, I, I noticed a club who is, uh, who, is, yeah, who is top, who has a lot of patience and who is very special. So I haven't noticed at the beginning of this season that um, they haven't won any, uh, uh, anything for three years, so that was not my feeling.